Hi everybody, Scott here, and in this video I'm going to be unboxing and installing a unidirectional flat panel antenna from 4G Antenna Shop and connecting it to a Sprint branded Netgear 6100D LTE gateway. We've had some major storms and snow here in New York over the past few years that have knocked out my redundant cable and FiOS internet connections. I'll be using Sprint's LTE service as a backup in case that happens again. Okay, now here's the box that the 4G antenna came in. As you can see, it kind of got beaten up by UPS. Um, it came like this, open on the side, and um, clearly not clearly not much in the way of packing materials. But, uh, and the tape's uh, actually coming up in the middle. But let's see what we got in here. And now one other thing I don't like about this is that without any packing material, with, that, with this box just bouncing up and down like that, you can see these holes. Those holes were probably caused by the antenna mount poking up to the top of the box. Now, if they were poking up to the top of the box, that means something was pressing down on these. So, it doesn't look like it damaged the antenna, but, uh, you know, it's not exactly the quality packing job one would hope for. But, no matter. Now, let's see what we got here. So, get the box out of the way. And you see the antenna just kind of stuck in with the cable. Now first, let's take a quick look at the cable. Alright, a couple of days have passed in the real world since I first opened the box with the cable and antenna and these two adapters. Let me explain why. As soon as I got it all out, I took my Netgear 6100D and I went to hook up this adapter to its two antenna ports. And, of course, the factory antennas had been attached, and I didn't remember what type of connectors these were. Now, it turns out these are SMA females. And this adapter that came with the set of the uh, setup is two TS9 males. Not compatible, obviously. So, let me explain why this happened. 4G Antenna Shop, when you're buying an antenna, lets you choose a cable to go with the antenna, and lets you choose the device that you're using so that they can provide the correct adapters to go from the device to the cable. Now, in this case, there's apparently a couple of different Netgear devices for Sprint LTE service. And Net 4G Antenna Shop only offers the one option for a device, and it's only labeled Sprint Spark LTE, something along those lines. They don't differentiate between the two different Netgear devices. So, this is for a completely different device, as is this. Incidentally, this has an RP-SMA female connector on it, and it came with an RP-SMA male connector to F-type female, which would connect right up to the cable. And so if this was uh, for my device, this would have been great. But I had to cut to today because I was waiting for this little adapter to come from Amazon. This is what I need. This has an, uh, an SMA male connector to F-type female. And that screws right into the 6100D. And then this cable that they included hooks up to that, no problem. Now this also brings up another point that you should be aware of. There are two types of SMA connectors and they both look pretty much the same. And you should be really careful when buying them online, especially if you're going by pictures. This right here is an RP-SMA male. This is an SMA male. You probably can't even tell in the video. The difference is that the RP-SMA male does not have a little pin inside, the kind that you're accustomed to seeing on maybe a cable wire connection. The SMA male does have the pin. RP stands for reverse polarity. Now that's a little confusing in of itself because RP doesn't mean that it reverses the polarity electrically, it just means it reverses the fact that the pin is either a male or female connection. Which is also confusing because a male connection always has a pin, that's why it's called a male connection, and a female connection always has a socket, which is why it's called female, I mean, I'm sure you could guess where that comes from. So RP means that the male connection has a socket instead of a pin. 
and here's an RP SMA female. And again, it's hard to see because they're a very small pin, but it's got a pin in there. So make sure you order the correct type of connector for your device because an RP SMA male and an SMA female will screw together and they look like they go together, except neither one of them has a pin. So there's no electrical connection made inside. You're just connecting the two shields together, which will do you absolutely no good. So now I got my SMA male to F-type female, and I'm in business because this will connect right up to the cable. Now, this is the most expensive cable option that 4G antenna shop offers. And if I compare it to a pencil, you can see it's quite a bit thicker. Now, a pencil is about the same thickness as an RG6 cable, the kind you have around your house for your cable television or cable internet connection. And this is a lot thicker for two reasons. One, it has much more shielding. I believe this is quad shielded, and it has a couple of layers of shield, well, presumably four, and it's a heavier gauge shield than you'd normally find on your average RG6 cable. It also has a 14 gauge core, which means that the conductor inside of here is 14 gauge, which is actually very thick for this type of cable. Um, the 14 gauge cable around the house is used to provide power on 15 amp circuits. And so if you've seen uh, 14 gauge Rolex, you know it's fairly thick for this sort of application. And that means lower loss, and on a 50 foot run, that's really helpful, as is the shielding. Now, these don't look like your typical F-type connectors. An F-type connector is what you would find on a normal cable television connection. This uh, is the same, except it has a boot on it, and that's just to keep the rain and water out. Now, on the other end of things, we have the antenna. This is a flat antenna, obviously. Plastic on the front, aluminum plate on the back, and it's... Um, it's actually fairly rugged. If I try to twist it right now, it won't twist at all. It won't bend. Um, it seems pretty well made. It seems like a fairly thick gauge of aluminum on the back. If I press down on it again, I get no flex really. And it looks quite discreet. So if you're going to be mounting this outdoors, your neighbors will, probably won't be complaining about the eyesore. It's also got a fairly heavy gauge steel pole mount. This is just a clamp that clamps down the pole, tighten down these nuts, and you're good to go. And of course, it allows you to pivot the antenna when you loosen it up, so you can aim it at the cell site. Electrically, it's got an F-type female on the back, and the included cable hooks right up to that. Now, I'm going to be mounting this in my attic instead of outside. That's both because I don't have a good mounting spot outside. I don't already have a pole and I don't feel like going up on a roof and drilling. So what I got from Home Depot is a simple black steel pipe. It's 18 inches long, an inch in diameter, and a nice flange to screw it into. The flange is gonna be mounted to my attic ceiling or a truss in my attic. And then the antenna, loosen up the bolts a little. The antenna will clamp right on, and it's going to hang like this. So now I've got everything I need to go from the antenna to the cable and to the Netgear 6100D. So now let's uh, get it installed. Here's my attic. My plan is to install the mounting pole here on this collar tie, run the cable along and across the rafters, and then down a plumbing chase to the basement. First, I'll install the threaded flange onto the collar tie using regular inch and a half drywall screws. Then the steel pipe gets screwed onto the flange and tightened down firmly. Finally, the antenna slides onto the pipe. I'll hand tighten the nuts on both sides of the pole clamp evenly, which is enough to keep the antenna from slipping down the pipe. By tightening down only one side using an open-ended wrench, I'm still able to rotate the antenna without it sagging out of plumb. 
Even though I had previously tested the cable and antenna, I wanted to make sure that everything worked in the final mounting location. I also wanted to ensure the antenna was oriented correctly. Now with the antenna connected, let's take a look at the signal strength. We have an RSRP of negative 88 dBm and an RSRQ of negative 7 dB. Now, that's not bad at all. RSRP should be between about 140 to negative 44 dBm, negative 44 being the best signal quality. RSRQ ranges from negative 19.5 to negative 3 dB, negative 3 dB being optimal signal quality. So negative 88 and negative 7 are not bad. They're towards the better end of the ranges and perfectly acceptable for this use, at least for my use. As you can see from the signal strength indicator on the device, we're getting four uh, bars of service out of five, which you know obviously is not bad. Um, I didn't test the stock antennas with the computer connected in the attic, but the stock antennas with just the device itself was showing one bar of service, which is obviously much worse. So immediately this antenna with the 50 feet of cable attached is a significant improvement over what I've seen before. This antenna is of course unidirectional. That means you have to point it as close as possible towards your nearest cell tower. Now I'm lucky in that my nearest cell tower is directly north of here. And that wall happens to face north. So as long as the antenna is parallel with that wall, I'm pointing it pretty much directly at the cell tower. Now, the other way to find out where your best reception is gonna be if you're not sure of where your nearest cell tower is, is to just rotate the antenna in increments and see where you're getting your best signal strength. That's kind of a pain with the Sprint device because it takes about a minute, sometimes more, sometimes less, to update the signal strength. For example, when I pointed it completely off axis, I didn't see a change for at least 45 seconds. So that could be t quite time consuming. The way I found out where my nearest cell tower is was by going to Sprint's website and they show a map of all the cell towers in your area. And with a compass or just a little bit of knowledge about which way your house faces, you can easily figure out where to point the antenna. So we're pointing it right here, tightening it down is easy couple of turns of these nuts so you don't want to make it too tight nor does it have to be just a little firm pressure and it's not going anywhere now to run the wire from here to the basement all right now to get the cable from the basement to the attic I'm pretty lucky in that I have a plumbing chase right here you can see the red and black wires are from a previous drop I did and when I did that, I left this rope hanging. So I should just be able to attach the RF cable to this rope and pull it right up from the basement. I just pull enough slack to reach the antenna and we are good. After running the cable along the rafters, I connected it to the antenna in the attic. The cable drops down to the basement where it's connected to the 6100D using a pigtail adapter I ordered from China. My core router is configured to use the Netgear's LTE connection as a backup in case my hard lines go down in a storm. The firmware on the 6100D is one of the worst I've ever seen. Read my irritable review at s.co.pt slash 6100D and thanks for watching my first ever instructional video.